Hi there. Welcome back to the Research and Development Lab here at Fold to Cover. Today, we're going to be installing a G4R Elite on this brand new 2015 Ford F-150. Let's get started. The first step in the installation process is to pre-install the windseal rails. We'll do this by attaching all four striker brackets using the bolt, split washer, and flat washer. Tighten to finger tight only at this point as we'll make further adjustments later. Now that we've mounted all four striker brackets to our windseal rail tabs, it's time to mount the windseal rails to your truck bed rails. To properly align the windseal rails, make sure the rounded end of the windseal is overlapping your tailgate by three quarters of an inch. Put a tape measure on the inside edge of the tailgate and measure the overlap to three quarters of an inch. Now that we got the wind seal rails aligned onto your truck bed, it's time to clamp the rails down to your truck bed rails. Use the inner clamp and the bolt split washer and flat washer to mount the rails to your truck bed rails. Before we fully tighten these clamps down, it's a good idea to check your alignment with the tailgate one more time to make sure the rails haven't moved during the tightening process. Using your 7 16 wrench, fully tighten these bolts to 70 inch pounds, and also make sure your clamps are level with the top surface of the truck bed rail before you tighten it down. Now that we've mounted the windseal rails on the truck bed rails, it's time to place the cover on the truck bed. You may find that you need an assistant for this part of the process. Start by stacking the cover at the front of the truck bed, disengaging all three safety snaps, and then carefully unfolding the cover towards the rear. Now that we've got the cover on the truck bed, it's time to mount the cover to your truck bed rails. Begin by opening the front panel and locating the hinge bracket tab that hangs down from the front hinge. Next, slide your pre-assembled hinge bracket onto the tab. Then, slide the hinge bracket shim down to the bottom of its slot. And finally, tighten the Allen bolts to finger tight. Now that we've got the hinge bracket mounted to the hinge bracket tab, it's time to connect the hinge bracket to your C-clamp. Begin by pre-threading a jam nut onto the bolt and then partially threading the bolt into your C-clamp. Then, tuck the C-clamp under your truck bed rail and use the bolt, split washer, and flat washer to go upward through the C-clamp into your hinge bracket. Now using a 7 16 wrench, fully tighten the bolts to 70 inch pounds before moving on to the next step. Now that we've got the C-clamp mounted to the hinge bracket, it's time to secure the C-clamp to your truck bed rails. Slide the C-clamp shim into place and then thread the bolts until they make contact. 
Then using your 7 16 wrench, tighten the bolts to 70 inch pounds and then fully secure the jam nuts. The one thing to remember when tightening your seat clamps is to avoid putting downward pressure on the panels while you're tightening it into place. The last step in this process is to fully tighten the Allen bolts to 20 inch pounds using your 532nd Allen wrench. Now that we've got the cover mounted to the truck bed, it's time to insert the striker bolts. Pre-assemble the striker bolt using two washers and a T-nut. Then, with the tailgate open and the rear panel open, slide the striker bolt assembly upwards into the slot on the striker bracket. Put the striker bolt at its highest position and tighten the finger tight. Now that we've got the striker bolts mounted to the truck bed, it's time to make sure the rotary latches are properly aligned with the striker bolts. Start with the latches in the open position, then slowly lower the rear panel, making sure that the large U-shaped groove of the rotary latch is perfectly centered over top of the striker bolt. If the U-shaped groove is perfectly centered over top of the striker bolt, no further adjustment is needed. If you do need to make adjustments, there are two nuts next to the rotary latch that you can loosen to allow you to slide the rotary latch forward or backwards into position. The next step in the process is to prepare the blade seals for installation. We recommend treating the underside of the blade seals with Armorall to help reduce friction between the seal and your truck bed and facilitate the closing motion of the panels. The next step in the process is to properly set the height of the striker bolts. We'll do this with the rotary latch fully engaged on the striker bolt. So go ahead and give the rear panel a firm slam, making sure that both rotary latches are fully engaged on the striker bolt. Now with both latches fully engaged, loosen the striker bolt, push the panel down until it's flush, and then tighten the striker bolt into place. Now that we've set the height of the rear striker bolts, it's time to do the same for the front striker bolts. Begin by giving the front panel a firm hard slam to ensure that both rotary latches are fully engaged. Then, to avoid having to crawl underneath the cover, stack the cover up at the front of the bed so that you can reach in and loosen the striker bolts from the side. Similar to the rear striker bolts, we're going to set the front striker bolts with the rotary latches fully engaged. So with the cover in the stacked position, reach under the cover, loosen the striker bolt, push the panels down flush, and then tighten the striker bolt into place. The next step in the process is to push the wind seal rails in tight to the cover. We'll do this with the cover in the closed position. Start at the front of the truck bed and push the wind seal rail in tight to the cover. The gap between the wind seal rail and the cover should be between a 16th and a 32nd of an inch. Once you've pushed it in, open up the front panel and tighten the two bolts that secure the wind seal rail to the striker bracket.
Next, do the same thing for the rear, pushing the rails in towards the cover, open the rear panel, and tighten the two bolts that secure the rails to the striker bracket. Then complete the process for the other side and you're ready to move on to the last step. So the final step in the installation process is to make sure that the rotary latches are properly timed. Begin by holding the rear panel open at a 45 degree angle and manually closing both rotary latches. Next, while still holding the panel open at a 45 degree angle, very slowly operate the lift handle. Both rotary lashes should snap open simultaneously approximately halfway through the motion of the lift handle. If, like this cover, the rotary latches are not properly timed, you will need to make further adjustments. Using a nine millimeter wrench, loosen the jam nut, then rotate the hex nut end of the latch cable clockwise to release earlier and counterclockwise to release later. When it's time to tighten the jam nut, use a 7 32nd wrench to hold the hex nut end of the latch cable in place. Now that your rotary latches are properly timed, your G4 Elite installation is complete. Thanks for joining us here at the Folder Cover Research and Development Lab. Hope you have a great day.